I recently put my daughter in daycare. I didn't want to do it, but being that I'm a single parent, I don't have much of a choice. After dubious research, I found a daycare center that seemed like a good fit. It was run by a girl named Wendy and seemed fairly popular in the neighborhood, as there were a number of kids there when I went to investigate. One of the things I particularly liked about it was the fact that they had security cameras set around the center so that parents can get access to them and check on their kids. It quickly became an obsession of mine. All of the kids wore jackets that the daycare provided because the air conditioner had been on the fritz, so it was quite cold there, but it was easy to tell which little girl was mine. I loved being able to watch my daughter play with the other kids as I worked, and it gave me the peace of mind knowing that she was doing all right. I couldn't keep my eyes glued to the screen the entire time, but in passing, I saw that she had made a friend she played with almost every day. She even had a favorite toy. It was a little medicine ball that she and her friends would toss back and forth. She played with it every day. After about a week, things seemed to be going quite well. My little girl had started really grasping potty training and was more well-behaved than I'd ever known her to be. Needless to say, I was impressed with the daycare. That was when she started singing the song. She hummed it at first, but when I asked her what it was, she told me it was a song they taught her at daycare. Eventually, she learned all the words and began to sing. We eat their teeth and eat their bones and slit their throats inside their homes. We sing this song and when we're done, we'll go to hell and have more fun. She sang it all the time. No matter how many times I had to ask her to stop, it made my skin crawl. Why would they teach a song like that to children? The next day, with the song stuck in my head, I resolved to call Wendy. I wanted to tell her that I disapproved of that song, and I didn't want that or anyone else like it taught to my daughter. If it continued, I would be forced to find a new daycare. As I watched the children play on my computer screen, my little girl playing with the ball like she always did, I picked up my phone and called the daycare. When Wendy answered, I told her about my concern. She was incredibly polite about it and said that one of the other children had been going around singing it. She said she thought it was from a movie or something, but she was working on putting a stop to it because that song was definitely not for children. She said it disturbed her just as much as it did me. I'd been pacing around my office as I spoke to her, and just as we were saying goodbye, I looked back down at the screen and noticed something peculiar. The Wendy on the screen was not on the phone, but was helping a child with his juice box. She said goodbye and hung up the phone, and I watched the cameras, not reciprocating her farewell, but transfixed on the screen in front of me. I stared at my daughter and her playing with her new ball and tried to think of how many times I'd seen her drop it as they tossed it back and forth. I didn't think I'd seen it happen very much. And the kid in the corner was always in the corner working on the same puzzle. How long had he been working on that puzzle? That's when I began to suspect that instead of watching a live feed, I had been watching a recording. I took my daughter out of daycare immediately. I couldn't allow her to keep going to that daycare until I found out what was going on. And even then, I still doubted I'd ever let her go back. My boss, being a single parent herself, allowed me a week to work from home so I could watch my daughter and find another daycare center. She wouldn't stop singing that song, though. Every morning before I went into her room to wake her up, I could hear her singing it. And at night, 
After I put her to bed and I thought she was asleep, I could hear that song coming from her room. It played back over and over again, in my dreams and in my head. I found it hard to focus on my job and on the search for the new daycare center. So when she finally stopped singing, and it was finally out of my head, my relief was immeasurable. Silence filled the house, and for several minutes, I couldn't imagine anything more peaceful. It was as if a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, and for the first time in days, I could finally suck in a full breath of air. When the silence broke, however, my stomach knotted even tighter. A feral, terrified scream tore through the house like a fright train. I had never heard anything like it. It was a growling, screeching sound, and immediately my mind leapt back into the verse of the song. We eat their teeth, we eat their bones. I leapt from my desk and followed the noise instinctively. It stopped before I entered my daughter's room, which is where I was led. And in a split second, my heart also stopped. The suddenness by which the sound ceased was almost as unsettling as the sound itself. When I stepped in, I didn't see anything at first, not even my daughter. Then I found her crouched in the corner with her back to me. She looked like she was busy with something, and I could hear a strange sound that even now I can't describe. I rushed towards her and picked her up and my hands felt a sticky wetness on her clothes. It was warm and thick and reminded me of caro syrup. I turned her around and saw that what I was touching was the blood that covered the front of her shirt and I immediately panicked. I didn't think of anything else other than to find out where she was bleeding. I carried her to the bathroom and ripped her shirt off and scrubbed her quickly with a washcloth to find the cut. I found a few scratches on her arms and scrubbed harder, looking for the source of so much blood. But I found nothing else. In my panic to clear her up, I hadn't noticed until that moment that she wasn't crying or even making a sound at all. I looked up to her, and aside from the blood that was smeared across her chin, she looked completely fine. Her jaw worked up and down, chewing on something, and with shaky fingers, I fished it out of her mouth. It looked like a thin piece of leather. I threw it in the trash and wiped my fingers on my jeans and picked up my daughter to carry her to her bedroom to investigate the origin of the blood. In the corner of the bedroom, where I had originally seen her crouched, was a dead, bloody tangle of fur and tendons that I immediately recognized as a cat I adopted from the shelter only a year ago. It was missing an ear. I screamed at her. I screamed out of fear and anger and panic at my daughter who just stood there next to me with blood drying on her hands, arms, and face while her blue eyes stared back at me like blank pools of water. I put her in the bathtub while I cleaned up the mess in her bedroom. I scrubbed with hydrogen peroxide and a carpet detergent until my arms were sore. But by the end of it, there was a small brownish stain that would serve as a reminder of what happened to my cat. In the bathroom, I heard echoes of my daughter's voice as she sang the song again. I didn't sleep much that night. Whenever I closed my eyes, I saw the corpse of the cat lying in the corner, and my stomach knotted up even tighter. When I did fall asleep, it was only for a few hours. I awoke at three to the muffled voice of my daughter through the wall. She was praying. She said the following prayer three times without pause. Now I lay me down asleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. 
And when I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take, will play and sing among the dead, and he shall feed us blood and bread, and I'll do his work until sunrise, and love him forever, the prince of all lies. When she was done, she said, Amen, and I heard her crawl back into bed. I got intermediate sleep after that, but not much. Just like the song, the prayer was stuck in my head, and it made me sick. The next morning, I found her sleeping deeply in bed, covered in a pool of her own urine. She hadn't wet the bed at all since I started her in that daycare. And even before that, I thought we had overcome that particular hurdle. But when I stepped in her room, the sickly sweet scent of urine and ammonia mixed with rotten stench of feces filled the room and made my eyes water. I found that she had not only wet the bed, but she had also had diarrhea as well. I gagged and picked her up and carried her half asleep still to the shower. As I cleaned her and she became more conscious, she looked at me with tired eyes. She didn't look like she'd slept much at all. When she spoke, her voice was dry and hoarse, but more sincere than anything she'd said over the past few days. You're going to burn. <laughs>